Hello and welcome to the January 2014 episode of MPS Today. Technology is the focus of this episode. We will learn about how several Northeast Middle School teachers and their students are using iPads and we'll learn about the, uh, how MPS students may store school projects in the cloud. Uh, it seems that in today's world, technology is always new and always changing and we're no exception. So here are the places new and old that you can watch the show. Charter Cable Channel 98 until January 21st, and as of January 21, MPS TV will occupy Charter Cable Channel 190, and you can find us there. You can also find us on Uverse Channel 99, uh, select Midland Community Television and MPS TV, or you can go to our YouTube site, which you can find by going to the Midland Public Schools website, www.midlandps.org, and then look for the YouTube site link there. And remember that when you go to the YouTube site, if you click on the subscribe button, you'll get updates whenever we have new shows. Now, our first guests today are Northeast Middle School teachers, Robin Bott and Deborah Finn. So, Robin and Deborah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, how long have you been teaching, and, and uh, what have you taught here at, North, at uh, Northeast or Midland Public Schools in general? Um, my name is Robin Bott, and I've been teaching at Midland Public Schools for 21 years. I started at Parkdale Elementary School and I've been here at Northeast for 11 years now. Nice. Social Studies and Language Arts. Great. Deborah? I'm Deborah Finn and I've been at Northeast for about 22 years. Um, I've taught 6th grade Social Studies and Language Arts with Robin for the last 11 years. I think so. It's a lot. It it's goes fun. fast. It, it goes does. fast. It does. <laughs> And we work together for a while now, so mm -hmm. I should say I, I, I know that you're both excellent teachers and enjoy working with you very much. So we, we appreciate everything that you do. Well, tell us, uh, tell us about that. What do you enjoy about teaching? What keeps you coming back every day? My favorite thing about teaching is watching the kids learn, especially in middle school. They bring a new thing to the table every day. You never know what's going to walk yeah. through the door, and you never know what you're going to get to do with the kids and, and um, taking them from where they are to where you know they can go. It's my favorite thing about being here. Change happens so fast in middle school, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> the growth of the It's kids, a roller coaster. It is. There's no doubt about it. I thought you were And in sixth grade especially, you have kids who, like the, uh, the range of maturity. You have kids who like cartoons. You have kids who are reading 700-page books. Do you know what I'm saying? So sure. it's really fun. And I think that also I like watching the kids learn. But it's a lot of fun. We laugh every day. Yeah. It's, they're Not fun. Not at them. No, well, no, of course it's not. fun. <laughs> it's fun. They, they yeah. do a lot of learning and we laugh along the way and it's yeah. just fun to watch them grow up. I think you kind of have to be that way to enjoy middle school, right? I mean, you have to enjoy the ups and downs and you have to be able to roll with the punches a little bit. And, and Probably. All those things. Probably. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about the iPads. This is year two of the iPad project district-wide. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying something a little bit different other than just the straight one-to-one -one project, which was started last year. So. You have some of the iPad carts, or a iPad carts, so tell us about that. What do you have and how are you using it? We have 32 iPads in okay. an iPad cart um, that we share between our two teams. So we have about 200 kits and we share these 32 iPads. So sometimes um, we'll alternate and Deborah will have half and I'll have half um, on other days. So the kids will either have their own iPad or they'll work in partners and share iPads. So it just depends on um, what our lesson needs that day, how we decide to use them. So there may be 200 students or so in the team, but yes. in any one class period, you'll have a group of about 30, you'll have about 30. 32. Have 32. 32. Yep. And that's how many iPads you have. So mm -hmm. They're either with a partner or they have their own. Right. right. Okay. And then you must have students going back and forth at different times between your classrooms and things like that. Yes. Little, little iPad messengers. Yes. They'll bring one. The cart will stay in one person's room. And there's little um, caddies that you can take. Mm -hmm. So I'll have 16, and she'll have 16. And But sometimes there's a glitch with an iPad. So you'll have to take the iPad down to whosoever room the cart is in, plug it in, and so it wipes it. And it usually solves the problem, and then bring it back. So we're used to having kids going in and out with us. Sure. And the kids know how to do it. Right. We, don't even, we don't even look at them anymore. No. They just come on <laughs> in, plug it in, they solve the problem, sure. it's all good to go. And you're real good at it developing systems every teacher is right to take care of things like that so well help our audience understand how you've used the iPads to actually teach uh, sixth grade social studies and English what are some ways that you use the iPads to to empower your teaching well I think one of the things that we really enjoyed doing this year was we've taught a unit on Canada in the past and we love our geography alive book it's we love it it's got some really great activities in it but we didn't love the way that it addressed Canada 
So we got together and looked at an app and came up with a really cool way to teach Canada. Right, the kids, ahead, got, to, the kids got to make a book um, on all the different things that they learned about Canada. So they did some research, they did some lessons that we taught them um, with traditional PowerPoints or lecture. Right. Um, and then they could springboard off and research a city or research physical features of Canada. Mm -hmm. So the kids really had a much more interactive experience with learning about Canada than they would have otherwise just reading out of the book um, or listening to a lecture. Now their presentations, because I had a chance to see some yeah. of those, mm -hmm. right? and if I remember correctly, it was it was kind of almost like a, an interactive PowerPoint, you know, taken to the tenth degree, right? Because they had mm -hmm. they had music, they right. had pictures, they had text, which they had to write. They could make and little movies and and put movies right. in that they make record themselves sure. explaining something. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's pretty neat. I mean, it's, it goes way beyond just a typical uh, either written presentation or even PowerPoint presentation. Now, how long would have that taken you to do in a typical school year if you were counting on the computer lab to do that? We could have done that in the computer. Lab. How is this different? Tell us about that. Well, there's so many kids at Northeast. And so a little over a thousand students right now. Right, right. And there are now two computer labs here, right? I think because we lost one. So you to, to get in there and sign your class in to get it, and plus we each have three hours of social studies. So in order to do that, I, I would have needed three hours, she would have needed three hours. We couldn't have done it at the same time. It would have taken twice as long. It would have been the logistics. So it just wouldn't happen. So that's no, why you're using it. No, not really. It wouldn't have happened. No. And the, and the iPads give us the advantage of the kids being able to make a movie or record their voice doing something or, you know, they're so portable that they could go out in the hallway and record something or right. listen to something so that they could understand it better. Um, so then they can show us what they learned in their book a different way. And so we it, wouldn't have that option in a computer lab. No. Right. Of course not. So it's, it sounds like it's not just about the presentations that the students can put together where they show what they've learned, but it's the actual research and the learning yeah. process Absolutely. that's empowered as well mm -hmm. with the iPads. Uh, have you had any issues with you know lost or broken equipment or just teeny tiny issue? Right. Uh, on our um, iPads, they have a little kickstand on the back so that it can lean. You can take your iPad and use the little stand up so it leans like that. Yeah. The little the stand is kind of plastic-ish, it's hard, that hard plastic, and so if it snaps and breaks, you can't really fix it. Right. But we just put books there and lean it against yeah. it and problem oh, solved. So nothing lost, nothing, nothing broken, broken like that, yeah. no, no. Kids are really responsible. Sure, and that's halfway through the school year, so that's right. what I've seen so right. far. Uh, what are some things that have gone really well, and what are some things that you've learned that you want to try to do differently than, than the next time? Uh, for me, something that's gone really well is uh, having that immediate feedback uh, that we can get as teachers when the kids use the iPad um, in a poll or, you know, we can add, put a little um, online quiz out there yeah. and get the information back from them right away. And that's been neat. And to see the kids be able to collaborate with each other and post comments to each other about a work that they've completed has been really valuable. And that's one of my favorite things because then they're learning um, not only in our real classroom but in a more of a virtual space. Right. Well, you bring up a couple of great points there, right? Because they, when they're commenting on each other's work, mm -hmm. they have to reflect and think to a deeper level, which is what we want them doing. Right. Right? We don't want them just memorizing and spitting back information. Right. So, uh, so that sounds like a really empowering process. And you, and you also talked about the fact that you can find out right away from a poll how mm -hmm. students are doing right. and so then you know if you have to go on. Or... In, in the past years that we've, we're both kind of, we like technology. We're kind of technology yeah. geeks, okay? So in past years, we've had these really cool lessons, and we were dependent on kids bringing their own devices. So in one hour, it might be awesome. Like, you would have, you know, 16 iPhones come in, or iBooks, or iPads, or whatever, that the kids would share with a partner. And that'd be great, and you'd have two kids to it, and that was a good ratio for the lesson that you were using the technology with. In other hours, you might have four devices come in. So that's not, right. so that's not very good to have a group of kids doing something that was designed for one or two. Exactly. So, right. so that has been amazing because we've had lessons in our back pocket that we've used in previous years and now it's just really fun to watch them, you know, have the lesson be the way that you thought it was going to go when you planned it. Right. Yeah. And then we can amp it up too because now we have even more technology. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty fun. fun. That's great. What, what is something uh, new that you're excited to try later this year? And, and, and then I also want you, to, before we go, I want you to tell me about Genius Hour. I've heard about this too. So. Okay. Let's do Genius Hour first. Okay. Okay. Genius Hour is an idea that was brought to light from the Google Corporation. 
Um, the premise is you give your employees 20% of their time to work on something that would um, forward advance the company, something that they're interested in. Well, education has taken this idea, and we've done the same. It's called Genius Hour, but it's 20% of their time. We have the kids um, an hour a week. The kids are given a project that they can come up with. They come up with on their own, and they need to figure out a solution. So it's a big question. It's research it, and then it's um, share your information that you found with an audience. Right. And these are all individualized, and the kids are geeked about it. They're, they're excited. They are. It's the only time my room's quiet. Is when yeah. Or yeah. buzzing. Or buzzing, depending. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. And the, the projects vary from, I've got um, some kids that are learning about lift, and, um, and so they're making paper airplanes and they're trying to, you know, experiment with what's going to fly the best, so they're researching it and then right. and they're putting it into practice and someone else that wants to start a business and she's looking into, you know, what do you have to do to be able to start a business, so. And building trebuchets, and I have one oh, right. um researching how addictive is Candy Crush Solder. Okay. <laughs> I particularly need to know that. Yes, I yes. Know. So, That's what people say. Yeah. Yes, so the kids are just crazy excited about it. They are, and they're learning. You can watch them. Yeah, sure. Learn. People talk about project-based learning and, and how it empowers students to ask. The teacher asks them a messy question. There's no neat, tidy mm -hmm. answer. Mm -hmm. The students have to explore, and, and it, it's it's empowering. It's engaging, and, and it's fun to watch those kids who. There are some kids who are just real teacher pleasers. Is this right? Is this yeah. right? Is this yeah. right? And it's fun to push them that direction where, I don't know, you tell me, is that right? What should you do next? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, like you say, it makes them think a little out of the box, not just trying to please me, just trying to think for themselves. So right. And I what are they passionate about? What do they really want mm -hmm. to know more sure. about? They can bring that to the table. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got half the school year left, so what are you looking forward to doing with the iPads? What do you want to try that you haven't done yet? We want to do, I want to do um, iMovies. We. We want to do iMovies. It's, um, we attended in the summer, we attended a project-based learning class, and they gave us um, monies to, you know, support whatever your project-based unit was. And we think that the iMovies would be excellent for the kids to be able to show information that way. Sure. And if you're going to develop a movie, you have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You have to plan it all out. You have to develop your own content. The content, right. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, it's a very exciting way right. exactly. for kids to show what, yeah. what they know right. that the kids would get really geeked about. Mm -hmm. what, it, what I think, too, is important about Genius Hour is that it's not just um, Robin's L.A. kids and my L.A. kids doing it. Right. Our, both our whole team. So all every 60% of the sixth graders at Northeast are using these iPads, are doing Genius Hour. So sure. the different LA um, teachers on my team, the different LA teachers on her team. So it's really exciting. And, and the cool part too is that so so we we take the cart into the other teachers' rooms, yeah. and it's like, what do we do? What do we do? And we're like, ask the kids because the kids yeah, know. Sure. They'll show you. Yeah, yeah, the kids know. So yeah, if, if you want to know how something works, just ask the kids. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we're learning. Just I oh, learned just as yeah. much as they learn. Oh yeah, I think they they some, they know more things about those iPads than we did to begin with. Absolutely. I yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you're doing a great job. It's really exciting to see uh, how our students are using this technology, how it's helping them learn the content in a richer, uh, more student-centered fashion. Uh, can we talk with some of your students about that, too? Absolutely. All right, well, let's do that. Here's what we're going to do. Up next, we'll have the MPS Minute, where you'll learn about how our students can store school projects in the cloud or online so they can access their schoolwork at school, at home, or anywhere uh, they have an Internet connection. After that, we'll come back here to Northeast Middle School and we'll talk to some students about how they're using iPads in sixth grade social studies and language arts. So stick around for more MPS Today right after this message. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Welcome to the MPS Minute. We're here with Chris Sabrin, Technology and Media Curriculum Specialist, and he's going to tell us about an exciting new opportunity for all students to be able to use a new technology resource. Thanks, Scott. 
Midland Public Schools has provisioned SkyDrive Pro accounts for all students across the district. This gives students a storage space for their files that they can access from any computer that has an internet connection, but it also gives the students access to the web app versions of Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint so they can work on those files that they're storing in this space. Again, it's important to remember they need to be at a computer with an internet connection. To access the space, students first log in to their MPS email through webmail, which can be found on our MPS uh, webpage, and then they select SkyDrive, which is in the upper right-hand corner of that window. This will take them to their SkyDrive Pro space, and at this time they can create and store files, and they can even collaborate on these documents with other students in their classes. Skydive Pro is a next step that we're taking in Midland Public Schools technology. We're excited to bring this to our students and excited for the potential that it brings. Get your I am so You're not in here. Yes, I am. Move. <laughs> Give it to him hard. No, no, no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back to MPS Today. We're here at Northeast Middle School in Mrs. Bott's room, uh, meeting with some of her students and Mrs. Finn's students to talk with us a little bit about how they're using iPads in their social studies and English classrooms. So we're here with Avi, Jack, and Karen. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Yep. You bet. So tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, I, people want to know things like, what do you like in school? Maybe your favorite subject? And, and what do you like to do when you're not in school or doing homework? Abby, how about you? Well, my favorite subject is math. And whenever we don't have school, I, uh, I like to do um, my homework. And I, um, I play sports. I play two sports. like ten I play tennis. I do taekwondo. And I also do singing. Great. Okay, Jack, how about you? Well, my favorite subject is science, and outside of school, I like to hang with my friends and play sports. What sports do you play? Soccer and basketball. So uh, you must be, you said before you're in the middle of a basketball season, or just finished up a basketball season. Yep. Okay. So how'd it go? Did it go well? Yeah, it went pretty good. All right. And Taryn, what do you like to do in school and outside of school? Well, my favorite subject is art and math. Um, outside of school, you can usually find me at the dance studio, or the soccer field, or the volleyball court, or maybe I'm out running too. So you guys are all doing a lot of different things. When you're doing dance, do you like uh, ballet, or jazz, or tab, what do you like to do? I like all genres of dance. <laughs> all of them. And you like to do art, so you have great art classes yeah. here. Yeah. Great. Well, let's talk a little bit about the iPad. So you've been using those in school this year, and, I, and I'm curious, for each of you, your background with iPads, did you use iPads before sixth grade here at Northeast, whether at... Uh, your elementary schools or at home, what's your background with iPads before this year? Well, um, we um, I used to go to Chestnut Hill last year, and we um, we got to use iPads in Chestnut Hill, and plus I um, used my um, small iPad mini in the house. Jack? Well, I went to the same school as Ivy, Chestnut Hill, and we each got our own individual iPad, and we took them home every day and had to charge them up and that was like a responsibility with them to bring them back each day and on the last day of school we had to bring all the pieces of the iPad sure. and like the charger and hand them back to the teacher. Did you miss it after you turned it back in? Not really. Not really? You were fine. Okay. Yeah. And Darren, how about for you? Well, my elementary school was Plymouth Elementary and we got, um, we got individual iPads also and um, we did a lot of cool stuff on there. Um, we could make power, PowerPoints and a lot of cool stuff on there. Sure. What was your favorite app for each of you that you used when you were at school last year or this year? Um, I think mine was, my favorite app on there was Keynote because I like to do a lot of PowerPoints. My favorite app on there was Flow because I love games mm -hmm. and also Book Creator because I love to make books on the iPad. My favorite app was Notability, just because you got to, you could make different subjects, and you could store all your work in the different subjects, and I just thought it was cool to make work and just put it in those subjects, so you know where it is every time. 
That's nice. You don't have to worry about losing it or forgetting the wrong binder or it's all in the same spot. Yep. Nice. Well, let's go through what a typical day for you guys might look like. Now, I know you're you're combined in Mrs. Bott's room here. Uh, we're here after school, so that's why some of the chairs are out there. So you're in Mrs. Bott's room and Mrs. Finn's room, which is a couple doors down. But if you're at the beginning of class and Mrs. Bott and Mrs. Finn says, all right, you guys, just take out the iPads. You know, what happens next? Why don't you take me through that? I will. All right, Karen, great. Let's grab the mic there and show me what happens. Well, we go, this is our iPad cart. Okay. And um, we, there's drawers on either side of the cart. And um, so what we do is um, we unplug these carefully. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when we, and then we take them to our desks and all that stuff and we do the work. And then um, when we, we bring them back um, very carefully, we put these in um, number order and um, and we we usually have like assigned jobs or something, and um, we these cords have number stickers on them, okay. and um, we plug them in very carefully either side. We don't force them, of course, because right. we don't want to ruin the thing, and we just plug them in according to the iPad, we match the number cord to the iPad. So do you have an assigned iPad? So when you come to class, you know that yours is number 12 or number 5? Or... Yes, um, we have school, we have class numbers, and we have, when we're doing it with a partner, um, we have, um, we have table numbers. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that's usually the iPad number. Okay. Of what's stuck onto our table. So why don't we have Jack? Can you come over here and help us for a second? Yeah. So if, let's suppose that uh, uh, Taryn, you're going to come grab an iPad. Why don't you go ahead and show us what that looks like? All right. Well, all right. And this is the way you do it too, Jack. Yep. And then you take it to your seat. Let's see what that looks like. Now, Jack, tell me what you see Taryn doing here. She's got two hands on the iPad. Yep. All right. She's down there. And then now that you're sitting down, now it's when you start setting it up. Yeah. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Well, Jack, while well, she's looking at that, tell me, you, you were telling me before about uh, it's obvious that you're all very careful with these. Have you seen a lot of them get broken or damaged or dropped? Or what's the story there? Well, I haven't seen them get dropped or damaged. It's just the cases, like some of the stands that are attached to them have snapped or just came right off. Taryn, can you show, the, show us what he's talking about there? Well, there's... Um, there is these um, stands. This one isn't broken. This one's in very good shape. But sometimes um, it, these get broken off. Sure. Or, um, you so know. When, so when people talk about the cases getting broken, that's the piece they're talking about. Yes, that this is the piece that they're talking yep. about. So you can't stand it on. You just have to right. hold it or lay it flat okay. down on the. But it's still workable, obviously. You haven't seen any iPads themselves get broken at all. Then these military grade cases. All right. And then Taryn, why don't you go ahead and show us what it looks like when we plug it back in. So you load it in the cart. Um, they all have to go on the same, same way. So, um, and then this is number eight, which is the iPad that I brought, that I got. And I plug it in carefully. And okay. And you close up the Close up the sides. And then it's they're in here, they're charging while they're in the cart. Yep. And they're ready for the next class. Yes, they are. All right, so that's what we look like. So Abby, why don't you come join us? And Jack, you come join me here too. So uh Abby, Jack, and Taryn, I face the camera. I'd like to thank you very much for showing us how you use the iPads in your classrooms. And uh, we're gonna meet with some of your classmates next and they're gonna tell us more detail about the kind of classwork that they do on the iPad. So thank you very much and uh, why don't you say goodbye to the folks. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Krugs, Zink or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, girl. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov.
They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to MPS Today. As promised, we're here at the Northeast Middle School Media Center uh, with students Erica and Caleb, and they're going to tell us more about how they're using iPads in Mrs. Finn and Mrs. Bott's classrooms this year. Uh, so Erica and Caleb, welcome to the show. Thanks. You bet. Well, to start off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, like, What's your favorite subject in school, and what do you like to do when you're not at school? Caleb, how about you? Um. My favorite subject is social studies, and when we're not in school, I usually are either playing like a football game or like on the Xbox, or I'm, eat, or I'm playing actual football or baseball. So you're into football and baseball and social studies. So what are you studying in social studies this year? I, I know the answer to this question, of course, but I want to hear what you have to say about that. Um, so we studied Invasive species and um, like habitat loss, and we learned about Canada and some other things. Okay, good. Sounds like you've had a good year so far. Mm -hmm. All right, and Erica, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Classes in school that you like, and what do you like to do when you're not at school? I like to read. Like I like reading in school, and then outside of school, I play travel volleyball and. I also play soccer, and then I, I like to read. <laughs> so in, in travel volleyball, do you have a specific position that you play, or do you play all over you the court? You play all over. Okay. And what do you like to read? Who, who are some of your favorite um, authors these days? I like The Hunger Games. It's a very popular series. Yeah. Have you seen the movies, too? Yeah. Now, are the, what's better, the books or the movies? Well, the first book is better than the um, movie, okay. but then the second movie is pretty much equal. All right. Are you a Jennifer Lawrence fan now, then? Is she your... Yeah. Favorite actress now that she's in those movies. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's talk about the iPads a little bit. Uh, you've been using the, so the iPads in your social studies and English classes, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, how are you using the iPads? We, we learned already about carrying them around and plugging them in and unplugging them and things like that. But what do you actually do with them once you have them out in class? Uh, well, we make projects on them. Like we do book creator a lot and then we also research stuff because it's really easy. You don't have to like go to the computer lab and all that. It's just really quick and convenient. That's a big issue at Northeast, right? And at Jefferson as well, right? Because you have a thousand students in this building. There's only so many computer labs. Yeah. Not, it's hard to get computer lab space. Have you been in the computer lab much this year? I haven't been in it any because I haven't really had any options just because it's so packed all right. the time. But, but with I've the been there once. you've been there once, okay. But with the iPads. You can uh, you have it in your social studies and English class every day. Actually, twice. Twice, all right, but not often in any not case. Not often. All right, so you use the book creator and uh, you research on the internet. And how about what, what do you remember using the iPads for? Um, there's this one app that you can have that so the teacher has it on their computer, mm -hmm. and there it's mostly the teacher can show a slideshow onto your screen. Oh, okay. So you could just be sitting there like looking at the screen and she would be able to move the screen and everything. And then there's questions there in the middle of it where you can like press, it either says like one of the candidate questions was like, what, um, what's the capital city of Canada? Mm -hmm. So they'd have a list of questions and you would click on Quebec and um, well, that's great, though. So the, so the teacher is able to essentially give a lesson, and you're able to view it on your iPad while she's giving it. And then you can answer questions on your own iPad. And, uh, and I would guess that the teacher then knows how many students got the questions right or wrong, and so then the teacher would know 
they need to teach it again or if they can move on to the next topic. That's a really powerful tool for the class. That's great. I'm glad you told us about that. What, uh, have you had many issues in your classroom that you've seen with equipment that gets lost or broken or anything like that? No, but like the stands break. Easily. Yeah, they were showing us that up in the classroom, weren't they? So, uh, what about iPads before this year? Have you used iPads outside of school before? Um, we actually come from the same school, Chestnut Hill, okay. and um, they, um, we had iPads there, and we had a little more apps than we do here. Okay. Um, but yeah, we, I can really tell what everything is. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Caleb. And Erica, how about you? What do you what do you think? What are you looking forward to doing next on the iPads? Well, I like to make projects on them because it's really easy. So I'd like to do more projects, just because it's it's better than having to like write all everything out and then like trying to go to the computer lab and then have to print out pictures and all that. Right. It's just a whole lot easier. When you're doing a project like that, I'm sorry to interrupt you. When you're doing a project like that, do you do it by yourself or do you usually have a partner that you're working well, with? Well, we've just done like one major project. We've done a lot of mini projects though, but the major one we had partners. Okay. And so you're looking forward to doing that again, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, a neat way to learn. Well, that's great. Well, thank you very much, Erica and Caleb, for telling us about how you're using iPads here at Northeast Middle School. We appreciate it. It sounds like you're off to a, a great school year so far. Mm -hmm. Well, that's our show for today. Uh, remember, you can watch the show on your local cable channel 98. That's until January 21st, and then we switch to cable channel 190. Uh, you can also watch us on UVerse on channel 99 and on our YouTube site, which is probably where most of you will see it, right? So you go to our YouTube site at www.youtube.com slash user slash Midland Public Schools or do what the students do. Just go to youtube.com and search for Midland Public Schools and you'll find us that way. Have a great start to the new year and we'll see you next time on MPS Today.